<laughs> Alright guys, I walked away from this yesterday. I had the press on. Um, excuse me, I'm, I'm like super tired. I'm going on sixth day with just an hour and a half of sleep. Um, the yellow somehow had a malfunction yesterday. As you can see, the yellow is not running. I've literally cleaned it over a billion times. Okay, so today we are going to flush the lines. All right, so first things first, you need one of these and some really boiling hot water. Well, it kind of cooled down, but we're gonna flush the lines. Hold on, it should be very hot. Okay, then you have your syringe. All right, so you are going to do an ink cartridge replacement. Okay, with the scanner, remove your plug. Alright, once it's ooh, almost just broken. Once it's ready, lift these. It's gonna be hard to do it with one hand. Guys, I have... Ooh, hold on. What's going on? Let me put this down real fast. Pretty much hell to pull out of that little piece. Um, so you want to take this syringe and make sure that it is attached to the spigot, okay? I might be able to get it with one hand. So, you're going to take this piece, apply it to here. If you use um, paper towel, it's going to work out a lot better. But because, uh, ooh, put the unit over the paper and just start to flush. See how hard it is to push the water? It's going to be hard at most time. I am pushing it with extreme pressure. I'm doing this twice. I'm going to refill the syringe one moment. Hey right, guys, change the tissue and repeat the process on each once i do one i do all um just so that way they're good let me plug this in right i repeated it a second time remove this but this area it's a little wetter than normal that's okay i guess it dries up right okay I am making sure there's no ink in those prongs, no ink in these prongs, and just put it back in and prime your lines. I've applied the lid, I put it back in. Wish me luck. Scanner piece back in. Right-hand nozzle check. Print head nozzle check. I need my bang. Excuse me.
this can take up to like six minutes. I've seen it take some time. It's priming the inks. Make sure all inks are uncovered. That's number one, and still no yellow. Twice. Still no yellow. I'm purposely going through the notions because I do want you guys to understand because it happens once, or you do it once or twice. Um, it doesn't work so once you do that step and it doesn't work then you just suck ink into the cartridge I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna replace the ink cartridges okay now you're gonna need the tool that has the nozzle push to the side because of this clip so it's specifically meant to um, go in there tweezers or whatever you guys use i use tweezers all right pull that out it's in a safe spot Push this in. All right, start pulling ink. Get the air out of the lines as you see. Ooh. I usually just pour back in, but today I just put it back in. It doesn't fall. Alright, I'm gonna do this twice just to ensure it's failed. See, there's still air and pressure. drop any ink it's the slightest all right so we're going to cover this back up Oop. Really push it back in hold this for 30 seconds and close your scanner Make sure there's no ink splooing everywhere. If there's ink between the prongs, anywhere in there, in the cartridge, it's not going to register your inks. So make sure... Right. Close the scanner. check number three after this flush I think it's four after three and we're picking through two and a half hours in <clears throat> actually I've been in here since four it's seven and some change three and a half hours in lots of work going on we are getting closer guys um so I want to talk a few things. I'm going to finalize doing this first, and then I'll explain why this keeps happening to me. I'm going to let you guys know that this has to be plugged into the holders.
gonna show you how to check the bottom of the lines. If you've done everything and nothing works, we are gonna remove this from from in here. You should wear gloves. I don't have any. Just cleaning it up as you see need more room for this so guys there's a few things I want to talk about um, in this instance what was happening to my inks so I had done a video to install this bracket with the pieces on top however what was happening was that the um, cords were pinched and compressed so much that it didn't allow the ink to uh, flow through now this problem always fixed because when i go to remove my ink cartridges you know i move everything around and it just so happens to unkink the other day i added the second prong to make sure it stayed in place and the issue arose so what happened was there was a kink and ink flow was not allowed to flow through so it was not filling the yellow and the blue which seemed to be the two that were uh, kinked up. So there's a few things I did do in this video. I removed these tanks, checked the lines here. I did think it was dripping. However, what it was was the pressure in the lines was over spewing the ink that I had filled in the back. Uh, if you check these lines, make sure they're pressed, make sure there's no kink. Um, and if it's good, then you move on to something over here and here these were also pulled from when i had this too tight and didn't give it slack so when it came this way it pulled the cords um tighter allowing this to be kinked as well on the inside check that out guys ink everywhere um so there were a few things i am going to reiterate on this video uh to give another opportunity for you to take a look at your system uh, when it's not the ink refill. Um, and again, it works when you pull out the ink, put it back because you're essentially unkinking and moving these things around. Guys, you're not gonna believe me if I say this. My maintenance box, I've been in here since three o'clock in the day and morning trying to get this going so that when the sun comes up, we're up and ready to fucking go. And now my maintenance box is full and it doesn't allow me to do what I need. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to troubleshoot this because I have a lot of customers. For the constant maintenance on my printers, I now have to reset So my workforce let me just get through this guys hold on
Hey guys. Okay, uh, there's a few things I want to touch base on on the 7720s here. Yesterday, um, a lot of it has to do on the setting of where I'm at. Let me start off by saying that. Nothing with the printer, nothing with the cartridges. I'm going to stress that out because I do know that I have my printer in a setting that is not ideal for any kind of printer, much less a printer that has an ink that is heat activated. So I'm going to throw that in there because this printer is fantastic. The cartridges are fantastic. The ink system is fantastic. My setting, not so much. COVID kind of ruined those plans and I thought I'll deal with it until I figure out a better plan because this size is obviously not going to be working for me anymore. So I didn't want to fix it. Long story short, I'm going to have to put some kind of insulation or make that change right away so that I don't have this problem again. But with maintenancing the printer and cleaning the print heads, these printers have a box, a maintenance box that dumps the ink. Uh, with other older printers, um, there's software that allows you to clear that count. Uh, it's basically a sponge that sucks up the ink, and once it reaches a certain amount of ink, um, look at that, my hands have ink everywhere. Once that box reaches a certain level of ink it disables the printer completely there will be videos um, to follow but I want to give all the information because I have literally been in here now a day and a half thinking it was regular maintenance regular troubleshooting um, so that was not the case along my findings I found more than one issue to be my problem with the printer and why I have to constantly maintenance it so, first things first, the 7720 does not have a program that allows you to bypass that. You cannot go online and purchase a key code and clear the count because the printer keeps count of how many times. And if you clear that, you could get away with using the box again uh, one more time before you have to purchase one. There, I paid 19 or $14 for one off of um, uh, Epson itself because I'm just going to have them on deck. Anyway, so I found two things. I had put in this bracket and it was pinching my cords, not allowing the ink flow. Okay? That was issue number one that I keep having issues with the magenta because it was the magenta in specific that was pinched by the clip, not allowing it to flow as it should. So it does work when I, you know, start to suction the lines, fill the cartridge for the moment. But when that cartridge gets empty, to have to refill it was a little process for me. That explains it because the line was kinked. I unkinked it and taped it, so be very cautious the video shows where to check to see if that's happening to yours. Next thing's next. You cannot purchase that tank anywhere in store, at the moment at least. I haven't found one that was available to pick up today. And um, you cannot purchase the key code to reset that. So you do have to have them. I suggest you having some extra boxes for their 14 or $18 or $19, having some extra boxes on hand because you can't clear it. On other Epson printers, I have done it. This one, you cannot do it. So, have some extra. was what was going on right before the box setting. It's printed. Where did I put it? Sorry, guys. I'm like... After changing the box. So what I did was I took the box out of that one because this is regular ink print and cut um, for an ink system. I could still do my print and cuts with sublimation. I have a lot of orders to do with the sublimation one. So I disabled 
this one and took this box. Well, this is the filled one, but I took the one from there and put it in here so that I could get the work that is due for tomorrow morning done today. Um, but if you need them both or you don't have two, this is disabling. So I want to um, pre-advise you guys in advance. And then this is also, uh, when I pulled it from that one, I don't do very much maintenance on this one because it's not... Um, you know, it's not heat-activated ink. But with any printer in the heat, you're going to have to deal with that. Especially with, you know, the print heads that are that do the DPI, a lot of DPIs. So, I just switched them and we're back and running. And this is what it printed out. So, have an extra box, guys. Check for kinks if you're having issues with the ink um, loading itself as well as um, make sure these are unclogged and are in this area. They're there for a reason. So um, I'll put a video as to why they're there, but they must go there, okay? Hold on. All right, they must go there on the second. 